Hello guys, welcome to another episode. I'm pretty excited with this episode because I think it's one of my best videos. In this video I'm going to show you how the rebound speed of your suspension affects the performance of the suspension. I'm going to use several dynamic simulations in order to explain you how does this happens and in this video I'm also going to explain you the concept of transmissibility which is a very nice nice concept and which can be applied to several cases like motorbikes or cars or monster trucks or whatever. So let's start the video. In this video we are going to see the concept of transmissibility and we are going to see how does it changes with different bump frequencies and also with different rebound speeds. We are going also to cover why do you need a high speed rebound and then we got the conclusions. So let's start with the concept of transmissibility. This is a really nice and easy to understand concept and basically the transmissibility is the ratio between the vertical movement of the suspended mass, in this case uh, of the car, and regarding the bump height. In this quick simulation we are going to see how does the body of the car, okay, the, the suspended mass of, of the car, will react to the bump. So the red and green lines represent the movement of the body of the car the suspended mass of the car and as you can see in this case the, the car moves vertically almost the same as the, the bump height so the, in this case uh, the transmissibility will be around uh, 1 the transmissibility of the suspension will change uh, accordingly to the speed that you come over the bump for instance you probably already noticed that but in a speed bump if you go over the speed bump at a slow speed the car will move up uh, almost the same as the bump height but if you go fast over the the speed bump uh, the suspension will isolate the bump and the body of the car will not move vertically like in this video okay as you can see the suspension tracks and isolates the the speed bumps and the the car the suspended mass of the car will not move almost nothing vertically okay so in this case the transmissibility will be close to zero okay so to sum up transmissibility is the ratio between the movement vertical movement of of the car or of the bike okay the suspended mass dividing by, by the bump height um, a transmissibility higher than one means that the suspension amplifies the bump and a transmissibility lower than one it means that the suspension the suspension isolates the bump as we saw in the previous video of the car now in this simulation we are going to see how does the type of bumps the frequency of the bumps will affect the transmissibility and in this simulation we got the bike and we are going to pass over uh, several bumps uh, all of them have the same height okay three inches tall bumps so the first type of bumps uh, are very low frequency bumps okay as you can see very large uh, and smooth uh, bumps and as expected the suspension uh, does not absorb this type of, of very uh, smooth bumps okay as you can see the red line is almost parallel to the ground to the blue line okay to the, the bump so the transmissibility in this case is one okay the suspension does not contribute to nothing in this case now we are going to approach uh, high speed uh, frequency bumps okay so in this case high frequency bumps as you can see the the suspension now is tracking the bumps and the transmissibility okay so it, the suspension is isolating the bumps and the transmissibility uh, is quite low okay now we are going to approach a very special bump, bump frequencies okay and let's see what happens in this case Okay, as you can see in this type of bump frequencies the suspension amplifies the bumps okay as you can see the red line is higher is bigger than the actual bump good so we already saw that on very uh, low frequency bumps okay so low speed bumps uh, in this case the the transmissibility is almost one okay so the suspension does not absorb anything 
on a very fast and high speed frequency bumps like roots or rocks the suspension tracks and isolates quite nicely these kind of bumps so the transmissibility is almost zero is, is very low okay it's a straight line it isolates the, the bumps and very interestingly in this type of frequencies i will call you mid frequencies as something strange happening happens here okay so as you can see the suspension actually amplifies the the bump the bump size good so now we are going to see why the hell the suspension behaves differently accordingly to the to the bump frequency this graph here this is a, this is a textbook graph and it shows you um, how the transmissibility of any suspension changes accordingly to the bump frequencies and as you can see on very low bump frequencies as we saw previously the transmissibility is almost one okay we are talking about this case here okay very low bump frequencies if the bump frequency is very high okay so we got here an isolation and the transmissibility is almost zero okay so this is so this is this case here okay now these special cases where you got an amplification we are talking about uh, these kind of frequencies and as you can see the suspension will always amplify this type of mid frequencies and how does this translate in real life basically this type of bump frequencies these mid frequencies correspond exactly to the pedal bob frequencies uh, weight transfers jump takeoffs berms and so on uh, while this type of high speed uh, bump frequencies uh, correspond to square edge bumps uh, bumpy trails rocks roots uh, and so on okay but, and basically what you want is to get the lower tr uh, transmissibility as possible in this region okay in order to promote stability on the, the bike okay so low amplifications uh, promotes overall stability in the bike and you also want uh, very low transmissibilities on this zone to promote a good isolation and a good plushness of over uh, high speed bumps like rods and roots good so now that you understand more or less the, the scenario we are going to see why the hell the suspension amplifies this kind of bump frequencies and we are going to see which which frequencies correspond to this maximum to this peak amplification so let's let's learn what is the natural frequency of the suspension okay so in this case uh, i remove all the rebound damping of the shock okay so imagine that your shock does not have any oil does not have any friction does not have any rebound damping just the coil or just the air spring what happens in this case uh, when you compress the rear suspension is that the suspension will uh, rebound and oscillate infinitely at its natural frequency okay and the natural frequency of a bike is about two hertz okay so it means that the bike has the tendency to oscillate at two cycles per second and this is the natural frequency of a mountain bike okay so that means that when you hit some bumps that have the similar frequencies to the natural frequency of the bike that means that the suspension will amplify the bump as we saw previously in this case okay so this type of bumps match with the, the natural frequency of the bike and the suspension amplified the bump causing uh, instability to the to the right good so are you still with me nice I hope so. <laughs> okay, so in this simulation model, we are going to see again this graph. Um, and it, this is very interesting because in this model, I can change the, the, the speed, the bump, the bump frequencies. Okay, so I can change the bump frequencies. And we are going to see what happens to the suspended mass that corresponds to the, the rider and the bike, or for instance, the, the car chassis. Okay, so this, this clip here starts with no rebound damping. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the system will oscillate infinitely at its natural frequency. Okay, so no rebound damping at all in this case. So in this model, this nice model, our natural frequency is about 
0.75 hertz or 45 oscillation per minute. Good, so now the, the spring is dumped, okay? Uh, it has a fast rebound, but it, it is dumped, as you can see. The spring is dumped, okay? It does not os oscillate infinitely. And we are going now to induce uh, a very low bump frequencies on our system. Okay, so as you can see, this crankshaft here simulates low frequencies. Okay, imagine that this is the wheels of the bike. Okay, as you can see, low frequencies, low bump frequencies. The, in this case, the sprung mass will move vertically, almost the same thing as the, the wheels or the bump weights. So in this case, we are using low bump frequencies and you can see the transmissibility is around 1. Good, so now we are going to see what happens if you put very uh, high speed frequencies on the crankshaft. Okay, so we are going to increase the rotation of the, the motor. Okay, so in this case, you got here a very high bump frequencies. This simulates, for instance, going over rocks and roots at high speed. And as you can see, the sprung mass, uh, it's quite isolated. Okay, so the sprung mass is not moving much vertically. As you can see in this graph, it moves much less than the previous case. Okay, I will repeat a bit again. So as you can see, the suspension isolates the bumps and the sprung mass only um, oscillates a little bit. Okay, so in this case, the suspension is isolating the bumps. Now, we are going to see again this special case here, when you match the bump frequencies with the natural frequency of the system. As I, saw, as I, as I said previously, in this case, the natural frequency of the system is 45 oscillations per minute. So let's put the engine at 45 rotations per minute. Now let's see what happens. Look at this. In this case, as you can see, the sprung mass is moving much more than the, the actual bump size. Okay, so in this case, the suspension is amplifying our bumps. Good, so at this point you already know a lot how the suspension works dependingly uh, of the type of bumps that you encounter in the trail or in the road. And now we are going to see how the rebound speed, okay, the, the rebound adjustment of your shock will affect the transmissibility of the suspension. So this graph here is similar to the previous one, but now each line corresponds to a different rebound speed. Okay, so the blue line represents a very fast rebound, okay, and the pink line represents a very slow rebound. So now we are going to compare a fast rebound to a slower rebound at the natural frequencies. Okay, so in this case we are stimulating the suspension at its natural frequency. This can be an example of pedal bob, for instance. And as you can see, the fast rebound amplifies a lot the oscillations. Okay, while a critically uh, adjusted rebound will promote uh, quite nice stability with a transmissibility around 1. So now we are going to see exactly the same thing, but stimulating the system at a very high frequency, like uh, going over a root on, or rocks. Okay, so this simulates a bumpy trail, and as you can see, a fast rebound will isolate much better the bumps uh, than a slower rebound like this one, which does not isolate so much the bumps, okay? Last year on the episode 5, I told you how to adjust correctly the rebound damping of your shock. So in that video, the idea was to adjust the rebound speed until the point where the shock rebounds fast, the fastest possible without oscillating. So if you did that, you are now the black line, okay? This is the, corresponds to the critical rebound that I explained you in that video. And in the same video, I also told you that you can increase the speed of the rebound by one or two clicks until you get a tiny oscillation. And in my opinion, this is the best setting you can get. If you did that, you are now uh, getting something similar to the um, this uh, light, light blue bluish line, okay? This, this line here. If you did that, you got a pretty stable and good and nice and nice bike with low amplifications at mid frequencies. But if you look to the um, high speed frequencies, uh, it, it sucks a bit. So it means that the suspension 
it does not absorb very well um, the fast bumps like roots and rocks. But fortunately, this is not true. And we are going to see in the next slide why this does not happen. This is not true because most of the shocks and some forks include in the damping what is called the high speed rebound damping. Even the most basic shocks with just one rebound adjustment, they have incorporated the, uh, an high speed uh, rebound uh, damping. Okay? Rock shocks call this, this rapid recovery, but this is basically the high speed uh, rebound damping. And what the high speed rebound damping does is that allows the shock to rebound faster on high speed bumps. So going back to this graph, if you tune the shock using my method on the episode 5, you got very nice stability at low frequencies, but given that your shock has a high speed rebound damping, instead of having a crappy transmissibility at high frequencies, you get a pretty nice um, lower frequencies, so much better isolation at high frequencies. So in conclusion, we saw that the fast rebound amplifies a lot lower frequencies, okay? So it's not good, it promotes quite an unstable bike, while a slower rebound promotes a very nice stability, the overall stability to the bike. However, on uh, fast bumps like rocks, rocks and roots, a fast rebound will isolate much better the bump and it promotes more, more plushness. In a modern shock that has a, ice, a dedicated high speed rebound damping, named as rapid recovery by rock shots, you can get um, the, the, you can tune the shock to get good stability at lower frequencies, like in this case, but the shock automatically increases the rebound speed on high frequency bumps. So you can get both this case on lower frequencies and this case on higher frequencies. Okay, so you get the best of the two worlds. So I hope that you like the video, now I think you understand much better how the suspension works and if you like this video please subscribe, give a like, share with your friends and if you want to support me you can also buy me a beer on the PayPal donation button. So thank you and see you next time, bye!